right, hi you guys and welcome back to my channel. Um, so last week I had the flu, which sucked. It majorly, majorly sucked. Um, but what sucked even more is I went to the store to get some hand sanitizer and some basic items to keep other people in my home from getting the flu and everything was wiped out. Like the store looked like the apocalypse had hit it. There is no hand sanitizer within 50 miles of my home. There's no rubbing alcohol, nothing. And um, I imagine that some of you are experiencing the same things in your store. So I wanted to show you today how to make your own easy DIY two ingredient hand sanitizer um, with things that you can still find in the store and it is very effective. So enough rambling, let's jump into it and make some easy DIY hand sanitizer. So in order to make this, you're just gonna need to get a bottle of Everclear from your local liquor store and it's really important that you get Everclear. Um, that's at least 151 proof. They do make a 190 proof I believe, which is much more effective, but uh, just like isopropyl alcohol and other materials right now, it is often sold out. But you can still make an effective hand sanitizer with this Everclear that is readily available. So just make sure it says at least 75.5% alcohol. In order to be an effective hand sanitizer, you need at least 60% alcohol by volume or higher. Anything lower than that is just going to um, slow the growth of bacteria, but it's not going to actually kill it. And then the next thing you're gonna need is just some aloe vera gel. This is like the cheapest one I could find at CVS that's dye-free and whatever. Okay, now here's the most important part. You're gonna need to pay attention to the ratio here. You're going to use nine parts of the Everclear to one part of the aloe vera. So you get it? Uh, just think about the number 10, that'll help you remember it. Nine parts of your alcohol, one part of your aloe vera, and that's gonna keep you above 60% alcohol by volume so that you can still have an effective hand sanitizer. So I'm gonna use tablespoons to do mine in this little jar, and you're just gonna count out nine of these. So you ready? One. Two. And nine, right? Okay. Take a swig, because you got kids. <laughs> Do it. No. Do it. No. <laughs> we will not weed out for the cow. Okay, and then you're just gonna do one tablespoon of the aloe vera gel. Make sure it doesn't exceed one, because remember, you're trying to keep that percentage right. And then I put it in. And I just put the lid on of this little jar and shake it because it takes a while to sort of disperse the aloe vera through the alcohol. So for mine, I just labeled this old spray bottle that I had um, laying around and I'm just gonna pour it in here and that makes it a lot easier to use. You ready? Yeah, go. Okay, ready? so we just made a little funnel out of paper here. Tell me when it's full. It's full. <laughs> Dude, that feels good. The smell of it is not mm. that bad either. It's pretty mild. That's neat. Squirt okay, me. hold out your hand and then you just spray it on. Make sure you cover all the surfaces. If you're washing your hands. Spray it in my mouth. Uh no. <laughs> <laughs> and then rub it all together. <laughs> all right, so there you have it, folks. An effective, easy DIY hand sanitizer that you can make at home and you can still get this at the store. Um, just head out to your local liquor store. People don't think to go there for uh, their health supplies. So um, it was no trouble for us to just uh, find this there. So remember, you're looking for at least, uh, for the highest ever crew that you can find, but um, at least get the 151 proof, 75% alcohol by volume, and then follow that ratio and you will be good. Your hands will be clean and you can put this in your diaper bag or your purse or whatever and um, it doesn't smell that bad and it works great. Well, my son is crying so I've gotta go. Um, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye.